Hey everyone, it's Desiree. Yes, I just turned on my phone and we're going to record because we got something a little bit different today. I'm going to be using uh, a new product to me, um, but it's been out for a while and I've been, you know, kind of sneaking around, you know, watching everybody um, use this. I was teetering whether or not to get this but let's just you know stop the suspense and again warning long video chatty gabby all that fun stuff because this is how we're going to do this so what we're going to look over and it's not a review i don't like to say a review i'm going to use it i'm going to give you my thoughts on it um, how I plan to use it, those types of things. And what I am talking about is the Spellbinders Better Press. This was a Christmas gift to me, from me. Yes, there's always one. I always give myself one gift. I keep it within reason, <laughs> but there's always one. Or, you know, I make the purchase and then I hand it to my husband and say, here, wrap this up and give it to me for Christmas. Yay, you! <laughs> That's always one. It's usually pajamas or slippers or sneakers. But this year, we did something a little bit different. Now, I do apologize. I think my printer's about to go off for some reason. So, in case you're hearing that in the background... I do apologize. We're not going to start over. So we're just going to let that roll. Okay, so here's the box that it comes in. Um, again, Spellbinders Better Press, and it's a letterpress system. So what a letterpress is, is when it just, it, it digs into the paper. So whatever you're pressing into the paper, whether it's an image a scroll um, type of design or a sentiment, a word, it's going to be pushed into that paper. So think about that. Your paper has to be thick, relatively thick. This is not something, again, in my opinion, you will hear me say this phrase, this is my opinion, that it's not going to work well with regular cardstock, especially lightweight, you know, even going up to the 80, possibly 100 pound, because there's just not that much push or give for that paper to take on and give the beauty of what letterpress provides. Now, they call it a better press because it's a better press. Um, and again, it says here, letterpress made better. So hence the name. This is used, um, again, they, they designed this to use with the Platinum, the Platinum 6, but it can also be used with Big Shot die cutting machines. Now, if you go onto their website, I will have the link down below. Hopefully I will remember where it will list some of the machines that this is compatible with. Just remember the machine has to be at least six inches wide for this plate. So if you have a machine that's not, this isn't going to work in your machine. It's also, if I remember, it will not work in the Gemini's, either one. All right, so that's right off the bat. But again, I will have this page linked down below where there's just a little bit more information. So you can see how thick it is. And then if we look at the back, these are the contents of what comes in the box. So you have the carrier or the chase. This here is the magnetic film. You get three shims and then the cover plate that goes on top. And it's magnetized in the four corners, which is great. It's going to come with some samples of their specific cotton paper specifically designed for this to give you the best results all right 
just keep that in mind. It, there's a reason why when it comes to a new product, and I say that in quotes, that there are things specifically for it. So the paper's definitely one of them. It's going to come with a roll of their awesome yellow tape, the best tape. It's going to come with a uh, Better Press ink. Now, this is an archival ink. It's oil-based. So again, this is specially formulated to work with the paper and with this press and its plates. And then you're going to get this beautiful floral image with a couple sentiments. So that's what comes with the system when you make the purchase. And then here, even on the box, it gives you four easy steps to get you going and to get you started so that you can create your detailed impression. All right, so let's open this up. And again, this is one of those products that I like to say is in addition to your arsenal. This is something, and I'm going to say this before I open this, this is something to think about you know, based upon how do you create your cards? What do you like to create when it comes to your cards or paper crafts? This is not a bad product in any way, shape or form that I am going to say. But what I am going to say is just like with anything, this is something new that has specific items to use with it. I, me personally, I am not a person to, to say, okay, well, I'm going to use this plate in this. I am a person that will use only the plates designated for this. That's just me. I am sure that there are crafters out there that have tried all kinds of different things. One of the things, though, that I will try, and the only thing that I will change out to see what's gonna work, how far can we push this, is the paper. That is something that I will look at and compare in this video to say, okay, this is their paper, this is what I used here, see the difference. This is their paper, I also tried this, here's the difference. And I'll try to do that with two, possibly three other types of paper so that you can see that. But that's the only thing that I will change in this system. I get that from when I was a quilter and I'm still a quilter. I still do sew. I call it sewing because I give it to somebody else to quilt. Um, I had, you know, a machine for my sewing. I had a straight stitch when I did my quilting. I had an embroidery machine when I did embroidery. I was not one to buy the machines that come out now that can do everything. I, to me, that's just a lot of wear and tear on one piece of equipment. You, I believe that you buy the equipment, that's what it's used for. We don't modify it and change it up. That's just me. That is just something that I've done for many years. But that doesn't mean I won't push it and I'm gonna push it here. I hope that makes sense. I hope everybody understands that, okay? And you know, if you ask a question, if you have one. Okay, so let's just dig in. Enough gabbing there. Okay, so we open it up, packaged nicely. So I'm gonna pull out the plate, gently put it down. Here's our pamphlet, here's our paper, here's our tape, and here's our ink. Now the inks do come, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw this across the room. Hear that? Just because I don't trip over it, nor will it get in my way. Now off to the side here, I do have my Platinum 6, hello, and I have that ready to go. The Better Press inks do come in other colors. You can also buy them in packs of four. You can buy them individually, and there's also re-inkers available. For me, 
when it comes to the better press, I'm thinking um, neutral colors when it comes to the better press. For some reason, when I see this, I'm seeing vintage looks. I'm, I have a vintage vibe. So the browns, um, the deep burgundies, the blacks, those are the colors that I'm thinking. So I did go ahead and I had purchased one of the four packs. And again, I purchased this system. So I got the four pack with the mulberry, the black, the bark, which is a dark brown or a brown, and then a cosmic sky, which is kind of like a faded jeans look type thing. So those are the colors that I see for the system. For this video, we're just going to stick with the black. Yes, we're going to stick with the black and we are going to use the plates that come with it. And you can see the beautiful etching in here. And then we have two sentiments that we can use as well. Here also, and I'm going to set this aside because I have one open. So I'm going to pull that down and just use that one instead of opening that one. Here is your pamphlet. This will give you step-by-step -step instructions and we are going to use these instructions. <laughs> I'm actually going to read. <laughs> and then again, there is more information and so many plates are available. Now I have been told and I have seen that these plates can cross over and be used onto your glimmer system. So if you have the Spellbinders glimmer, you're kind of getting the ability to use these plates in another system. Okay, so that kind of can stretch this system for you um, into another use. So that's a good thing. But again, only use this ink. That's what it was designed for. It's not your typical archival ink from Ranger. All right. And then the paper, they have stated that the paper is specific to the system, um, but that's what I'm going to push. All right. So we have these items here and then here is our plate system. I'll pull that plastic off. You can see that started playing just a little bit. So this here is magnetized. So you just lift this off and it does come off me. I'm just trying to be, you know, a little gingerly here, but and you can hear it snap. It snaps. All right. So we're going to set that aside and then you have your shims. There are three shims that come with this. So yes, I did open this before because I was newsy. Um, you have three shims. Here's your base of this plate. All right, and then that's what the back looks like. And they say you take these shims and you place them down into this nook, this cutout. This here is your magnet and that gets placed down there as well. All right. Now, the other thing that I did, and again, this is what I did. I don't recommend this, but it will drive me crazy when this gets dirty. It's just, <laughs> you know, I'm being honest. It's just something that's going to make me nuts. Now, what I have are those old, I'm going to age myself here. Okay. So if you all remember this, come on with me here. All right. Um, are the old projectors where you had the films and you would change out the films and it would go up on the screen in front. It was one of those big machines, you know, it had an arm that came up and the light came from the bottom projectors that that style. Um, so I have a ton of those very thin sheets. So I've cut one to be the size of this plate here. So if any ink gets on this, I can clean this. 
Am I taking the chance of my plate shifting? Yes, I am. And that's just something that I will take on myself. You do not need this sheet. You just go directly onto this. And when we pull out the plate, the, the plates here, I'm going to open this up as well. La -la -la. Of course, this is taped. There we go. That's nice and clean. It's going to adhere. So if I lift this, and there's a notch right here that you can put your finger in there. This, this is the magnet. It's not going to go anywhere. All right. I'm going to set that back down in there. And I'm going to lift this up. So if I put my plastic sheet down, let's see. See, I'm taking that risk. I am taking away the magnetization of that. Now, I'm also bending this. So if I bend it, it's going to pop. All right, so just keep that in mind. But this is something that I'm going to do. Now, I'm really pushing on this, and it's not moving. So let's see what happens. Okay, again, not recommended. Nope, but just saying. Here, I'm going to work on an A2 panel because that's what my card stock is that comes in the system. And I'm going to place my floral image down in the marking. So they have a marking for A2, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, or A7, which is a five by seven card base. So they're the two sizes that you have here. I'm going to take my image. And I think I'm going to have it come up like this. And then I'm going to grab one of the sentiments. Let's see, which one do I want here? I think they're the same thing. I believe. I think it's just, these are two different sizes. So same sentiment, two different sizes. So say, so, you know, I've got to read. All right, here we go. We're going to take this one and I'm going to place that here. just in the general vicinity and I'm going to set it in place and I'm going to line it up and that's where my plates are going to sit. Now I'm going to push this aside. I'm going to need my ink. So I'm going to set that there. I'm going to move my thing here. And for this, with what we've done there, we are basically on still on step one because we've put our shims down, we've put our magnetic plate, we've put our plates down. Now we're going to work on getting our cardstock in place. And we want to do that before we ink. So I'm going to take my plate and I'm going to grab one of the papers here. I thought I cut into it. Maybe I didn't. See? Real time, guys. Real time. <laughs> this is the beauty of real time. All right, here we go. So here they have gray. They have a porcelain and they have a white. So the porcelain's like an off-white and then they have the white. I am always, I always lean towards the porcelain. Um, to me that's like what watercolor paper is. It's a porcelain color. 
I'm not really into stark white, bright white, unless I'm creating that card that should have that. Again, personal preference. So I'm going to grab this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this down within the markings on the clear plate. And I'm going to take a little bit of tape and I'm going to tape down this piece of paper, just making sure that I'm really off to the side and I'm not in any area of my image. So again, really, matter of fact, I'm going to take this out to the corners because I know I'm not in the corners when it comes to my image. Really taking it far out because you don't need much to hold this paper in place. And there we go. So now when we flip this over, that's not going to go anywhere. And you don't want your paper to shift. Because again, as this is going through your die cutting machine, it's adding that pressure. It's pushing down onto it. Now let's talk about this paper. So this is definitely a heavy weight. I'm going to, this is definitely water. It's a watercolor type paper. It feels like a watercolor weight. You can hear that. So very heavy, um, maybe 140 pounds. I don't know. I'm sure that's written here somewhere. I'm guessing at that. Don't hold me to that, please. All right, so now we have our pieces in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our ink and we're going to ink our plates on the better press. So we're gonna hold this and we're gonna twist and turn. Again, twist as we apply our ink onto our plate. You will get, as you're doing this, you will get ink on your base because you do have to make sure that your plate is covered and covered well. And these are very beautiful, fine details. Now I'm seeing here that there's some areas that I really got to push down to get covered. And that's what you're doing. You're pushing the ink pad down onto the plate and twisting. Some areas may not look like they have ink. But I'm sure they do. But we're going to find out if not, right? All right, I'm going to put my cap back on my ink. Now we're going to take our plate and we're going to set it down into the four corners. And you can feel those magnets are just grabbing it just grabbing that in place. I'm going to lift this. I'm going to bring in my Platinum 6. Now it's going to shake as I do this, so I apologize. And we're just going to run it through the system, and it's going to squeak. So we're going to run it. Again, the magnetic corners are holding the, uh, the plate in place. And we're just going to go back and forth. Now, I don't know if we should go back and forth, but I'm doing it anyway. Because that's what I'm used to. And we're just going to run that through. It's through. I'm going to grab my plate. I'm going to get this out of the way. And let's see if I did this right. Or if I did boo-boos along the way. All right, we're going to lift. And that is a beautiful image. 
So areas that I thought were not getting ink, they were, but that's how fine those details are. And it dries, dries quick, and I'm rubbing my finger and you can just feel this beautiful, beautiful impression. And it's got such an impression that this is bowing just a little bit. See how the paper I can push in the center of it? Absolutely beautiful. That is letterpress. Absolutely gorgeous. And then what you'll do is you just take your tape off the corners carefully so that you don't tear your paper. And again, you can see I didn't use much of it. So, and there you go. There is your panel. It's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. This, this is wonderful with watercolors. Absolutely. That is just absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous. Okay. I'm going to hold on to this and I'm going to put this right in front of me because then I know that's the thing. So we're going to do this again, except this time I'm going to use a piece of, remember what I said, I'm going to stretch the paper. So I'm going to test it on a piece of Bristol and I'm also going to test it onto a piece of Canson XL watercolor. Now, before I do that, I am gonna take these panels and I'm going to cut them down to four and a quarter and five and a half. So I'm gonna cut them down to A2. And I'm going to write on the back, so this is Bristol and Canson XL watercolor, and it's cold press. All right, so remember, the paper that is specifically designed for this is 100% cotton. So it's, it's got good fibers and it's going to do all of that fun stuff. All right. So up first is the Bristol. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put my paper down first. You don't want to ink your image first, then put your paper down. When you get your ink onto your plates, get your paper to it because it will dry. All right, and our last one. So our paper's in place, it's secured. We're gonna grab our ink and we're going to twist and turn, twist, turn, press, press, turn, twist, press, turn, twist. I also noticed that since I have this very thin film, this is not acetate, that I have on this. This is a film, a clear film. My piece did not shift. All right, put the cap on. We're gonna grab our plate. We're gonna flip it, let the grab. It snapped on. I'm going to grab my machine again so that you can see this. And we're gonna take it a couple passes through. Squeaks are bound. We're just gonna do two. Now I'm gonna do three because I did three on my first one. All right. 
she's done. I'm going to grab the plate, and I don't want to push down on it again. So I'm going to push that out. Here we go. Pull off my plate. And you can see I'm lifting it off on an angle. Again, beautiful image. Clear, crisp, no shifting. It does have the lift in the center. Now, when I run my finger over this, it is does have an impression, but not as much as this one does, the original. This one, you can definitely feel. You can feel, let's see if I do this. Hear that? My nail is just skipping along. So let's listen to this. It's there. It's not as pronounced. So you don't get as much of an impression that you will using the Spellbinders card. Now, let's try. We're going to do one more. Again, we're going to remove the tape. And I have this one labeled. I didn't label the Spellbinders, so we're good on that. <laughs> All right, we're going to set that one aside. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab our Canson XL panel. Put that in between our marks. Grab a piece of our tape. Tape it down in the four corners. And you can see the amount of tape that I'm using is getting smaller and smaller. Because you really, you just don't need much. And I'll save that, put that on my thing. We're going to grab our ink. We're going to ink up again. And again, we're pressing and we're twisting. Pressing and twisting. If you just do this, you're going to do this forever. I'm just saying. So you want to press and twist, press and twist. And I like to put my middle and my thumb on the outside and my index finger on the inside in that nook of the pad. And again, just make sure you've got some good coverage. We're gonna do the same thing. Lift our plate, let the magnets grab. It snaps right into place. We're gonna pull in our machine and we're going to run it through. Same thing, three times. One. Two. Okay, she's come out. I'm going to put my hand underneath it. And you can start seeing the image. I saw it start seeing the image on each one. Push that off to the side. Again, same thing. We've got the center, which is fine. Again, this is a lot of pressure. This card is, no matter what card stock you use, it's not going to lay completely flat after this. There is a lot of pressure going on in this to get that deep impression into the paper that you're using okay now if I put my finger over this I can feel I can feel that impression it's close to the spellbinders paper you can hear that well I don't know there's a Harley that just went by So there is a nice impression into this. So to me, it is universal. 
when it comes to papers, but they have to be heavyweight papers. So for me, my thought process is mixed media, thick mixed media papers. Okay, so heavyweight watercolor papers, heavyweight Bristol papers, and that was the Canson XL Bristol paper that I used. And this is actually the smooth. I probably would like it better with the vellum because um, I do like the vellum more than the smooth. Just say that again, personal preference. Um, here's the spell binders. Here's the Bristol, and here's the Canson XL. So three beautiful images. You're just going to have the difference in the texture of the pressing of what you get. Now, to you're not getting anything onto your clear plate, so you should not have to clean that. To clean your plates here, okay, forgot something. You want to use archival ink cleaner and a lint free rag. And then once this is cleaned, you do want to rinse it off. Um, with some warm, uh, just a lightly warm water um, and soap just to make sure that there's no residue from this cleaner. Um, you can't use any, you don't want to use any other cleaner when it comes to this. Now this cleaner has a little tiny spongy thing at the top and you just tap it down onto your plate making sure you have good coverage and you've covered everything. This will get dirty because it's going to start cleaning, as you can see there. And then just come in with your rag. And you can see it does come very clean. But you want a lint-free cloth and you really want to wipe it. So very nice. And now we're going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to grab a corner of it. <laughs> there we go. And then we're just going to push. Now I'm really shaking my table, so I apologize. And you can see all that ink is just getting picked up by your rag and you just want to keep wiping it but this cleaner it does have a slick feel to it so you want to make sure that you do you know just rinse off and I'll take this to my sink and just rinse this off and let it dry before I use it again and that's what your plates going to look like this one came off a little cleaner, but again, you do want to make sure that you are cleaning these and I can feel that. Whoa. Okay. Residue. Make sure you put your cap back on tightly and that should last a while. Now, because I use this clear film, I can just wipe that away as well. And that's not getting dirty because that would just I can deal with it, you know, with the other mats, you know, the mixed media mats, but I can, no. <laughs> it's just, don't judge. It's just a, you know, it's an OCD thing. And again, I'm going to put this here. So that's the operation. That's what you get. That's how this operates. I've shown you just some, a very small, slight modification that I did with that film, not acetate. It's a clear film sheet. There is a difference, okay? I cannot stress that enough. Not acetate. Um, what you get, that's what we used when it came to our system. The instructions are wonderful. They are very clear, very easy to follow. 
um, which is great. Don't give me things that are too difficult here. Now, what would I use this for? I think, I also think that the paper, if I used my Strathmore mixed media paper, um, the, my favorite paper that I use for colored pencils would be absolutely phenomenal. To the point though, where I think I would have to remove a shim. So always take that in mind. These three pieces, the Spellbinders, the Bristol, and the Canson XL watercolor, I did not have to remove any shims because these are all about the same weight and the Bristol's a little thinner. The mixed media Strathmore paper, the tone tan, blue, or gray, or the white and the black, they are slightly thicker. So I think I may have to remove a shim because you don't want the plate to cut through the paper. And it's something that you would have to test out as you get your system if you don't already have the system. I would not use this with my colored pencils. I know everyone just went, oh, no, I would not use this for my colored pencils. And here's why, because it has the beauty of the embossed image. The color, when you use colored pencils, you have layers, you have blending, you have all of that. And you even have the texture of your colored pencils because of the layers that you're putting on. I just don't think you'd be able to get great coverage within between this setup because you'd have to get into these hills and these valleys, or at least get to the side to cover those areas up you would always have to have a super, super fine point on your colored pencils. Will this look beautiful with alcohol markers? Yes. I think where this process is absolutely going to shine and be absolutely magnificent is watercolors. Absolute watercolors. I cannot wait to grab my watercolors to color these images in. That is where I think this will shine. It's also going to shine for me more so for sentiments. I think this gives a beautiful result for sentiments. You don't have to heat emboss. You don't have to foil. You don't have to do this. You just use the ink, press it into your paper, and you have the most gorgeous sentiment. I think it's going to be even better yet with large sentiments because of what you're going to be able to add to it. So, my final thoughts. Is this for everyone? I cannot answer that question for you. And I know someone will ask, do you think I like this? I don't know. I'm not you. Was I cautious on this first? Yes, I was. Absolutely. Because I'm like, okay, well, you know, I have this or I can do this and I can do it this way. I can press my dies into my cardstock using the rubber foam mat. What is this going to be different? So I did my research and I sat back and I watched. When I saw some of the images that were coming out and the way that the sentiments were set up, I started to rationalize in my mind and say, you know what, this is gonna be great for those elegant sentiments. This is going to be wonderful for these beautiful floral image or that image where it's, you're just not gonna be able to get the detail from a die or an embossing folder when you want that image on it. Like there is a plate that is a spider web. It's gorgeous. A die is not gonna get that for you. Neither is an embossing folder. 
It's just not going to do it for you. But this plate will. And again, I see vintage for this. And most of you know that have been here, I love vintage. And this gives that effect just by doing this. So that was my reasoning and my justification because that is what I'm doing now. I am justifying things that I purchase and if I make a purchase. What can I do with it? How can it be used? Is there something that I can modify, not the machine itself or anything, but can I use different papers? That's my key because I'm always pushing the grade with that. If you choose to get this, will you enjoy it? Yes, yes, you will. It's very simple to use, very easy, very user friendly. It's not complicated at all and it won't hurt you. Yeah, well, you know, the, the glimmer gets hot, you know, and me, I just put my hand right there, asbestos hands going on here. So none of that, unless you keep your finger in between the plates as you're pushing it through your machine, but you can't do that to say, all right? Um, so it is very user friendly. It's going to give you great results. The, you have to know though, yes, you have to buy plates specifically for this. That is my recommendation and that is what I'm going to stand by. So it is an investment. You will invest in plates for this system. You can be precise with those plates. If you have the glimmer, those plates can go to the glimmer. The glimmer plates cannot go to the better press. Let me say that again. The glimmer plates cannot go to the better press, but the better press plates can go to the glimmer. That's what I've been told. I have not tried it yet. Okay. So keep that in mind. There is another use if you have your glimmer system. So you're stretching already those plates. I think this will get even more universal. I think it'll grow. Spellbinders does have a club for this system, which is great. Their clubs are a great way to build your stash. Now, yes, with clubs, you don't know what you're going to get from, from time to time. However, for the most part, their clubs have been dreamy. They've really um, looked at their clubs. They all go together. And again, you guys know me. Um, I show three of their clubs every month and they are absolutely wonderful. So again, something to think about when it comes to that. That is my, those are my thoughts. I wanted to show this to you. I've had a couple people or a few people reach out to me um, via my email and ask if I was going to get this system. Hopefully you're seeing this video because I was asked when it first came out and I never, I very rarely jump right on a new system that comes out. I kind of wait just a little bit, um, only certain things that I'll jump right into. Uh, but this one I did. I sat back, I watched the videos, I watched the creativity of it, and I was inspired. Okay, so that's me. So I hope you found this useful and helpful. That's what I'm looking for, for it to be helpful. Maybe I made a statement or showed you something that others did not when it came to this system. And if you have more questions, please make sure you leave them down below. I know this is a long video and I apologize, but I wanted to make sure that you got my thoughts, why I had those thoughts, and what how I'm going to use this system going forward. You will see some projects um, when it comes to future videos. Um, I already have a couple of them lined up. So you'll see me using this again definitely this is not a once and done thing i will have this link down below along with that page with more information if you wanted to check it out to totally up to you all right it is your choice whether you click on those links 
or not. Okay. So thank you so much for spending this time with me again. I hope you found it useful. All right. When it comes to your choice, when it comes to your art that you create and remember it is art, always enjoy the process, always have fun with the process. Don't get stressed. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. It always helps. Ring the bell. I hope the bell helps you all so that you can get notified when the next video is ready. Eh, sometimes that's an if or, you know, give or take thing. But remember, guys, what is most important to me always? Be creative in everything that you do and every day. Until the next time, I'll be talking to you.